Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Glenmore 2 Chronicles, which is the sequel to Glenmore, takes the gameplay of the original and adds a lot to it. It's on Kickstarter right now, there's a link to the campaign page in the description so you can take a look at all the final stuff. This is all prototype stuff and I'm going to be playing through the whole game today. I'm doing a two player game against Little Glass Marty. And this is all about us as Scottish clans trying to spread our territory, increase our wealth and make whiskey and stuff. So here are the boards. If you are familiar with the original game, this one will be familiar to you, but the clan board is a new addition. If you don't know anything about Glenmore, I'm going to be explaining everything as I go so you can follow along. And as always, I recommend that you turn on Klingon subtitles to be notified of any mistakes I might make. So these are our starting kingdoms. We just have a village and a castle each. I am playing with optional extras in this. There are Chronicles, hence the name of the sequel, and these are mini expansions that you can mix and match and add into your game. I've got a couple in the prototype, but I am playing with Chronicle number one, and in this Chronicle we are going to be having a boat race. So our boats start on our castles and we are going to be racing them across these things to simulate other players, but we're going to be racing in a great big circle and that will kick off in the B phase, but just to let you know why these are here, we'll be getting all sorts of benefits and the people that uh, if I do the best, then I'll get 15 points and some whiskey that can be worth even more points later on in the game. The way it works is, this is a time track and all of the players are on it. This dice is used in a two player game to tighten things up. You can use it in a game with more players as well to have a shorter game. But you look at the person furthest back on the time track and that means that it's their turn. So I am the first player and on my turn, I need to take my marker and put it on one of these tiles. And I'm going to take that tile and add it to my kingdom. If you can't take it, you can't pay for it for whatever reason, you can't choose that one. But I am going to be taking something from here and adding it to my kingdom. And when it gets added, it's going to activate itself and a load of other things. So what is available? I can go to any of these, by the way, as well. I can skip right ahead to the last one if it's something that I desperately want. But Marty here will have the chance to pick up all of the things that I skipped over if he wants to. Now there is something to consider that you don't want to have the biggest area in the game. You do get penalized if you have tons of tiles at the end, but it's something that I could do if I skip right to the end, Marty could pick up a few of them. So to get started, I think we want some resource production. I think I'm gonna go small here. I'm gonna go for a little stone quarry, just the first tile that's available here and this needs to go into my kingdom. So the rules are, it needs to go orthogonally adjacent to an existing tile, so not diagonally, it needs to go right next to an existing tile, and it needs to go adjacent to one of your Scotsmen. Now you only start off with one, and he starts off in the village here, and this can be diagonal. And really for your very first tile, you can be kind of planning ahead, but uh, yeah, this, this matters later on because when I place this now, this tile activates and the icon in here shows what it's going to do when it activates. It's going to give me one stone. It also activates every tile around it, including diagonals. So here it's going to activate both of my starting tiles. Now these two tiles give you Scotsman movement, which is more important later on because you can only build adjacent to one of your Scotsmen, so you'll want to be moving them around so you get the best building options. But for now, I think I am going to use one of my movements. I've got two there because both have been activated. I'm going to use one of my movements to move him over there into my castle. Now this is important because it keeps my building options open. I've still got all of these available spaces around. But at the end of each round, there are four rounds in the game, A, B, C, D. At the end of each of them, we're going to be having scoring. You see the bar that's just underneath the tiles there. And we're going to be comparing the difference that we have between things. And it's between these landmarks, between how much whiskey we have, between how many Scotsmen we have on our original castle. So that's why I want him there as well, because now I have one more than Marty. And it's all about having more than the other person, not having reached a certain number, just having a certain amount more than the other players. Oh, and the final element of scoring that I didn't mention is the is the person tiles, which is a new addition for Glenmore 2, the person who has the most of them. And then the tile itself activates, so it produces a stone, and we place that stone on the tile. 
you can have a maximum of three resources on a tile. So on my turn, I moved forward to a tile, I grabbed the tile, I placed it in my territory, and then it activated itself and everything around it. So I got myself a stone and a Scotsman moved one space, and the other movement point was just wasted. So that's the end of my turn. We look at the time track again and see who is in last place. It's Marty. So he has the same choice now to decide what he wants to jump to. Now, we would like animals. So we could get some sheep or some cows from the first tiles there. But I think Marty is... Marty's going to be thinking of whiskey. And so I think he wants a wheat field. There is a distillery coming here that can make whiskey which is important because it's one of the considerations for scoring at the end of each round. But to make whiskey, you need wheat. So Marty is going to try and make that his thing. He needs to place it in his territory, so he's just going to place it down there. And the same thing happens. He gets a wheat, where I got a stone, and the resource needs to go on the tile. Marty has the same decision. I think... <laughs> Not wanting to be left out, I think he's just going to do the same thing for now. So we've just gone in a bit of a different direction for resources. Now we have the die is the last player. So we roll this, and this is basically just a dummy player, just to tighten things up. This die has one, two, or three on it, and you look that many spaces ahead, and it takes that tile. So it's taking the one that's three ahead, so it's actually going to take the forest here, the wood-producing space, this just gets discarded, but there is a way of getting discarded tiles. There's one way of doing that, so we'll keep it to the side for now. So it's back to me. I'm in last place. Now, I could have both of these tiles if I want to. I could be producing sheep and cows straight away. But the thing you want to think about is at the end of the game, we compare the size of our territories. We look at the number that the person with the smallest territory has, the number of tiles that he has. For every tile that everyone else has more than that, you lose three points. So if Marty ends the game with 10 tiles and I have 15, I'm going to lose five times three, 15 points, which could be a huge thing. So that's why you don't just want to stop off at every single thing. Looking here, though, I would quite like Castle Stalker. I could, you know, see what Marty's doing here. I know he's picked up wheat. I could be thinking he probably wants this distillery. And I could stop him from taking that, but there will be more later on, so I might not be stopping him too much. I could get Castle Stalker, on the other hand. Now, this requires resources to take. It gets you a new Scotsman, and also it gets you a landmark card. So we look down here. This is just an arbitrary place. They're not in the middle of some river. Well, Castle Stalker actually is. <laughs> but uh, Castle Stalker would get me three coins as well. And coins are useful for buying resources in the market. And they're worth points at the end as well. Now, Castle Stalker wants stone, which I've got. Wood. Unfortunately, the dummy player took that away. But it also wants cows, cattle. So I think I'm going to make a little pit stop here at the farm. And I'm going to grab this tile. Now, when everyone has skipped over a tile... You add it to the discard pile. Man, I'm getting so wrapped up in my Scottish decisions that I'm forgetting to refill the board as I go along. There is always one space behind the last player that's left empty. Other than that, though, you're allowed to see what's coming up to help influence your decisions. So the farm, where should it go? I think I'm going to make it go here just because it then activates my quarry as well. So I get two Scotsman movements. I don't think I want to move anyone just yet. Although if I want to keep going down here, I do want to move the Scotsman. But I'm going to get a new one in a minute. Spoilers. Uh, so I, I need to get a stone and a cattle. And I'm just, I'm just not going to use that Scotsman movement. I'm still in last place here, so it's my choice again. And I think to go in a bit of a different direction, I am going to go for Castle Stalker. So let's put me there. Grab Castle Stalker, and it needs to be paid for. So the cattle and the stone, I can pay from my tiles. Unfortunately, I don't have a piece of wood, so I can't pay that. But this is where the market comes in. Anytime you need resources, you can buy them if there is an available space on the market. So these will fill up with coins as we buy them. So no one's bought anything yet, so the market has three of each resource in it. So I'm going to buy myself a wood which costs me one coin because that is available. Now, 
I give everyone the option of selling wood and they can take that coin back if they sell one wood to the market. I won't take the wood because it's just being used to pay for Castle Stalker straight away. So the same rules apply to placing these tiles. I have to put it somewhere around the Scotsman and adjacent to an existing tile. I can't put it on this row though. You see this row has a river on it. It was a road in the original Glenmore, but it's a river now. And only tiles with rivers can go in this row and tiles with rivers must go in this row. So I think... I think I'm going to put Castle Stalker there. I think the better thing to do, actually, would have been when I had movement last turn, I should have moved my Scotsman there, put Castle Stalker there, and used its movement to move the Scotsman back away. So they're a bit further apart. But I wasn't that clever. So I get a new Scotsman, that's what that symbol is, and then I take the landmark card for this landmark, which just gets me three coins straight away. So it cost me one coin and a couple of resources I already had, but I get three coins now. I keep the landmark tile because we need to know how many of those that I've got for the scoring. And then everything activates. So I have one, two movement, and I produce a cattle. Now I could move this Scotsman, you know, up here. And then I've got two in there because A is about to finish. It could get me an extra point doing that, but it will limit my tile placement for the future. So I think for now... I'm just going to I'm just going to move him there because then then it's right in the middle and it feels better that way, right? So we need to refill the display with a new tile. And it's going to be oh a conversion tile. Now here you can take resources, so this is sheep or cattle. You need two in any combination and then that will get you four points when you activate this tile. It's a trade tile. Marty's in last place, so he has next pick, and he is keeping with his distillery plan. So he is definitely grabbing that. And ideally, he wants to place it somewhere where he can keep activating this and the wheat at the same time. Before he takes it, though, he needs to pay a stone. He doesn't produce stone. He only produces wheat. So he's going to have to do the same as me and buy a stone for one coin. Now, though, he's going to place this down here. So he can have Scotsman movement again, but he's not going to use it just yet, which could be limiting. Maybe if he places it there, he could get another tile in the future that goes in the river there and activate both of these. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. So in the bottom left here, we have an icon similarly to when I got the castle. This means get these things right now. So he gets one whiskey barrel. And then its activation power is he can turn a wheat or from any of his tiles into a whiskey barrel. So he's going to do that now. So he has two, which is two more than me. And then finally, his wheat tile produces. He's going to leave his Scotsman there because yep, scoring is soon. A new tile comes out and it's a new forest if we'd like to produce our own wood. The dummy player is next. So let's see what he's going to take away. That's two tiles in the future. One, two. He is getting the services of William Wallace there. A new tile comes out now, and it's going to be the final uh, landmark tile, Donan Castle. Now, when the last tile is placed from any round, we have the scoring for that round. So first up, it's Scotsman on the castle tile. Marty has one. I have one. There is no difference, so no points. Next up is landmark tiles. So I have one, Marty has none. So I have one more than him, so I get one point. Points are tracked just on these tiles. Obviously, be nicer in the final game, won't they? Next up is Whiskey Barrels. Marty has two more than me, so that's going to be two points. And finally, Person Tiles. We, neither of us has one, so no points there either. And then we go into round B. Now, since the dummy player took the other person that was here, I am going to grab Robert Stewart. He is going to lend his services to me. And as well as getting a person, which counts for you know, one of the scoring categories at the end of each round, you also get to place one of your clan markers on the new clan board. Now, these are either immediate benefits or special abilities you can carry through the rest of the game or scoring opportunities. I won't go through what all of them do, but you can basically have whatever you like. If you have one that's next to the start spaces here, say I wanted to get influence with the McKinnon clan. I could get myself a Scotsman and two coins right now. It would cost me nothing because there are no coins between the start space and this one. 
If I wanted to jump straight to, say, Campbell here, I would have to pay one, two coins because that's the path to get there. In the future, though, you can go from existing clan markers and not just your own. So if Marty had one there, I would only have to pay one to get one here. Now, one of these abilities here, Munro, is take a tile from the discard pile. It might be more useful later on, but I'm actually going to go for that one. I am going to grab, so it's going to cost me, I look down the path, no coins, one coin. It's going to cost me one coin to do that. Luckily, I've got loads, so that's fine. And I put my clan marker on to show that that's not available anymore. I am making things cheaper, though, for other people in the future. Now, these are the tiles available. I could have some wood, some sheep, or my choice is going to be William Wallace, because now that's a second person. It's cost me a coin, but that is now two people I have more than Marty. And now I would like to go cheap and get some resources and things, but I'm going to go for an ability that I absolutely love. I'm going to pay a coin to go to Macintosh from here, which, you know, before if I'd gone to Macintosh right away, it would have cost me two coins. Now, because I'm already there, it only cost me one coin to move further. Now, Macintosh gives you the permanent ability that your castles are treated like Scotsmen. So I can build adjacent to my castles, whether there are Scotsmen there or not. Okay, it's Marty's turn again, so what are his options? He can get himself a village, that's some more movement possibilities, more Scotsman. He could get himself a quarry, so he's producing stone. He could jump ahead and get Robert the Bruce, try and get in on the person's game, because, yeah, he could take one of these and leave it open for me to just jump ahead and get a third person. And, you know, the it's just one point each for, you know, just, just one, two, and three ahead. But as you get four and five ahead of someone, the points jump up. Now, there isn't another person for a while, as far as we know. Oh, we, we need a tile, don't we? The first B tile, it is a person, so he could get John Knox a little bit later. But I don't think he wants to risk me taking another one, so he's going to grab Robert the Bruce. He's actually going to go for McKinnon here, I think, and get himself a new Scotsman and two coins. The Scotsman can go anywhere. So maybe he should have more possibilities here, but I'm going to put him on the castle so that Marty can maybe store up some more points. The new tile comes out and it's Lock Shield, which reminds me that we should have the new cards for the B phase. So we already know the A landmarks that are available. This is what the B landmarks can do. So you see you're getting more and more stuff. I'm in the back, so it's my turn. I... Now, I've already got one more than Marty. I think, though, I, I'm not going to turn down the opportunity to get another village. Because I would like more Scotsmen, of course. And where am I going to put it? Now, putting it up here is nice, but it doesn't really activate any of this stuff down here. So I think... I'm going to place it down here. So the Scotsman, in this case, needs to go on the village. And so we have stone and a cattle are the easiest first. Let's do those. And we have one movement from the village tile itself. I'm actually going to move this Scotsman to my castle for the scoring because I don't have to worry as much because for me, thanks to my special clan ability, this castle counts as a Scotsman and I can build adjacent to the castle. So I'm kind of covered from all areas, not there, but a lot of areas. The dummy player is going to take something away. It's going to be one, two. It's going to be this village. So Marty misses out. I'm not going to get another one. This was a river one, actually. It would have been quite nice. I'm at the back again. I don't want to stop off for another quarry, I don't think. We're going to skip over that. I could get Lock Loki. It's another landmark tile for me, and it's two resources of my choice, and it doesn't cost me anything. Or do I jump ahead a little bit? Now, I don't have wheat, so that would cost me two... It would cost me one coin to grab this distillery, which can't be activated in the future, like Marty's can, but it would get me two whiskey right now and catch me right up. I... But on the other hand, I could get ahead on landmark cards. No, for, for now, yeah, I'm going to grab the distillery. I'm going to pay a coin. This gets discarded because it got skipped over, so we need to refill quite a few with the dummy player and the skips. 
So we have a couple of new people and another cattle farm, but we have the start tile. This isn't something anyone takes. As soon as one person goes past this start tile, the boat race begins, and we can go into that a little bit more. So that's how far it is in the future. Let's place my tile then. This one doesn't really matter for activation because it never needs to be activated again. So I could just put it up here. I could put it down here and make other things activate, but I think I think that's a good idea. Let's just have it have it up here where we don't really care that much about it. So I need to pay a wheat, which I've paid for with my coin, and I get two whiskey barrels. Marty's up next, and it would be silly for him to skip Lock Loki. And so it gets placed on his river. He's going to put it in this direction, and that's to do with the boat race that we'll see in a bit. He gets the tile, which is two resources of his choice. Now, he already produces wheat, so I don't think he's going to take that. Maybe, you know, this this conversion building, this trade tile here wants sheep and cows. Maybe he wants some of those. Or maybe he wants, you know, there's no stone production coming. We skip, He skipped over both of them, so maybe he should get some stone because stone's more expensive. Yeah, he's going to get a couple of stone. And these go on any tile, but the restriction of three on each tile is still there. He's just going to put them on Lock Loki and then it doesn't matter, does it? But he's got a landmark card now to catch up a little bit. And so Marty's got a clan movement that he's not going to use. He produces a wheat, but he's going to use that wheat straight away to get another whiskey barrel. So he's got three now. The dummy player is next, and he's going to take the next tile away. So it's that trade tile. And a new tile comes out, which is a slightly improved version of that trade tile. Marty's up next. He could get himself a forest. He could skip right ahead if he wants to start getting some more people. But Donan Castle there would get him another landmark, and it would let him put a clan marker out. If we look at the cost, though, he hasn't got wood, so that would cost him two coins. He's got stone, and he's got wheat. So does he want to spend two coins to have this castle? I think, for the purposes of being in front of me, he does. Unfortunately, though, he wouldn't be able to take the castle because he hasn't got a Scotsman here. Okay, then, we'll... we'll We'll have a little bit of a, a retcon, and we'll say that he used that Scotsman movement, even though it does put him in a worse position for scoring. He would have seen Donan Castle and got excited. So he needs to put two coins on this space for buying that wood, and then he needs to spend his stone and his wheat. And so there's no activation for Lock Loki. Oh, he needs a Scotsman on here. I think he's going to use the Scotsman movement to move this guy back because now he can build from this one. Although, he can't really build down here now, can he? Yeah, he'll, probably, he'll move the Scotsman down there and destroy his entire territory. So he gets the tile for Donan Castle, which means he can put a clan marker out. I think he's going to go on Mackenzie up here, which is also free, gets himself a wheat and a whiskey barrel. He's going to be using that wheat now when he activates his distillery to turn that wheat straight into... Another whiskey barrel. He's three ahead of me now. I'm next up. And I think since wood is getting very expensive, it would be in my interest to pick up a forest. Even if I don't need the wood myself, I can sell it and get some nice coins. I think for now I'll place it over here so it can get activated loads in the future. And I get myself a movement I'm not going to use. I'm happy with it where everyone is at the moment. Although up there would be nice, but I don't need this one to be activated. We don't have to worry about that as much. I get myself one wood that goes on the tile, and that's it. New tile comes out, and that's going to be the Tommen Towel Fair. Pronunciation, right? And that lets you turn in goods that aren't equal, basically. Anything, three of anything, not the same thing. And you get six points for that. Let's do the dummy player again. And he's taking away the next tile. It's a person, unfortunately, for us. And it's me again, so I could get Lock Shield, which is a whiskey and a Scotsman. I'm going to go for it. I'm losing the whiskey race right now, aren't I? I need to put a new tile out from when the dummy player took something as well. What's coming out? We have a sheep farm, and we have a stone farm. So I'm getting Lock Shield. I'm going to put it on this side. So what's this going to do for me? Lock Shield gets me a whiskey barrel, which I would like to catch up on because Marty is too far ahead of me for my liking. And I get a Scotsman on the Lock Shield tile. I'm then going to use movement to put this Scotsman onto the castle for, for scoring. 
Then I get myself a cattle from here. More movement, which I'm just going to waste, I think. And a wood. So really now, I need things that want cattle. I want this trade tile probably, because I, if this gets activated again, I waste that cattle production because there's no space on the tile for it. And nobody has bought a cattle, so I can't sell one for coins either. Now Marty, as tempting as it is to run over and start a race, he is going to grab a person tile. So he's got Jacob the second there. Who is going to help him get another ability? He can keep going for these cheap ones, keep getting Scotsman and money and things. Now I think Marty's going to pay big. He wants the Mackay clan's favour all the way up here. It's going to cost him though one, two coins to do that. But he's going to do it. So I'll grab his clan marker and stick it up there. And he needs to pay two coins. Now, David Hume counts as two people, so it's going to help him get the edge on the person tile scoring. So we need a new tile, don't we? And that's going to be an in. Just produces points whenever it's activated, but costs you a whiskey and a stone. So the dummy player is taking away Mary Stewart. New tile comes out, which is the ship builder. Now, this is a special tile that only comes in when you're playing with the boat race chronicle. But this basically costs a cattle, but it gives you two movement. Because, as we're about to find out, movement, as soon as the race has started, instead of using it on your Scotsman, you can use the movement on your ship to try and win the race and get all of those juicy points. And the race is absolutely going to start when I go past here. I think, as much as I would like to produce some wheat, I'm going to skip right ahead to the tile that I want here. The trade tile. So the race has now started. I'm going to place it down here. And so first off, I am going to activate the tile itself. So three in some combination of cattle or sheep. I'm going to just pay in cattle. And I get myself seven points for that. Then I produce a stone and a cattle, which is okay. There's space for those. And finally, I get myself two movement. Now, I'm still fairly happy with where the Scotsmen are, so I'm going to move my boat. So, two movements. One, two. You have to think of this like it's some great big circle that we're in. So, it's my kingdom, then this dummy kingdom, then Marty's, then this one, and then back to mine. You, you win, you end the race by getting back to your own tile. And when you go to other people's castles, there are these tiles that will give you benefits. You get to pick one of the remaining ones on there. And this is a reason why we wanted to build kind of to the right so we could get moving faster. Now that I've moved off, I want to put as many tiles here as possible because this stops Marty. When he eventually gets to my area, I want to give him as many tiles to go through as possible if I can get hold of them. And finally, a new tile comes out, which is another nice forest. Okay, so we've done some kingdom expansion. We've just about started the boat race. I think we'll leave it here for this video. If you would like to see the rest of it, we'll go all the way to the end. If you'd like to know what I think, there'll be a link in the corner of the screen. Whichever one you choose is up to you, and I'll see you there, hopefully. Thanks for watching this one. Let's go to the next one. Bye.